and we are ready to go. So first here, we're going to create a number variable here with one, just for our example. And then for the if else section, we're going to do a if number is less than five. So in Rust, you don't need to put the parentheses. And then we're going to say print pretty small. And if it's not, then we say might be big. Press save. And now because we have one, pretty small. And we save it. Then we change it to 10. Press save. And now we have might be big. So obviously we can do else if as other languages. So we do else if number is lesser than 100. We're going to say it's pretty normal. And then otherwise, the last one, we're going to say that it's pretty big. Then we press save. That's pretty normal. And then if we make it 110, that's pretty big. So now one of the cool thing here first is that actually a if else can become an expression which means that the whole if-else flow here can return a value that we can use later. So for example here, if we remove the println and we're going to remove the semicolon and the last parenthesis, now because the last line of each block here with the parenthesis, with the brackets, are without semicolon, this means that they're actually returning those values. And obviously since it's an if-else, there could be only one value return. And so now we can assign the result of this if else block into a variable. And then here's the last little trick here is a variable assignment is not an expression. Therefore, it has to end with a semicolon. So everything is consistent. So here at the end here, the last one, we need to put a semicolon. And so now what that happened here is this if else will return one of the three values and put it in a variable message. And message is still immutable here from beginning to end. And now we can print the message this way. It might look a little bit odd, but it's actually an extremely productive way to write your code. Because in Rust, variables are by default immutable, and that allows you to have branching to assign value to your variables without making them mutable. And that fits very well with another keyword of Rust, which is match. So now let's talk about the loops here, the four loops. Rust has three types of loops, loop, while, and the for. So let's do the first one here, the loop. And the way it works here is we're going to set up a counter and then it's just with a keyword loop with no condition at all. The break happen inside. So we have our code block here. We're going to do a println and we're going to print the counter and we're going to increment our counter. And then we're going to say that if counter is greater than two, then we're going to break. Print save. And then we have zero, one, two. The second type is while. So here, for example, we are going to take an array here with zero, 10, 240. And then we're going to have counter as well. And then we're going to say while counter is less than three. Then we do the println and we're going to print an element of the array. And now we're going to increment the counter to do a plus one and everything works. So in the real code here, never do that. It should be a counter lesser than a dot length to make sure that you are not pointing outside of the array because Rust is safe. And when you will do that, it will actually crash the program. So always make sure that when you iterate through an array, you actually use the length of the array. So now let's see the for loop. And the first one here is going to be with the iter. That is a better way to iterate through an array. So we're going to do for element of the array in. So that is the other keyword. And we do a a dot iter. And that is a function that will return an iterator. There's a lot of things about iterators and we'll talk about it in another chapter. But for now here, this is a good idiomatic way of doing it. And then we're going to do a println here and we're going to print the element. We're going to press save. That is a very safe way to iterate through an array or a vector. And now if we actually want to block earlier, we can definitely use a break keyword. So here we're going to do an if element equal equal ampersand 20. We'll talk about it later why it's like this. And then we're going to break, press save. And we see that when it match 20, then after it breaks the loop. So the reason here why the 20 is not 20, but ampersand 20 is because the iter function 
that we have on the array actually return a reference of i32 and not the i32. And so this is why to match the type here, we need to make sure that we're comparing with a reference to i32. So for example, if we remove the ampersand, press save, then Rust tells us that it cannot compare us these two types. So now we put it back and everything works fine. And usually when you iter through arrays or through vectors, most of the time you want to use iter to make sure that you just get the reference and you don't move the value out of the vector. And the last one here that we can see is how we do a for loop with a range. That might be useful sometime when you have a range of numbers that could be bound by a variable and you want to just iterate through them. So in this case here, we do a for number in, and we're going to use the range notation. So that is not a tuple because we have the dot dot. So that goes to zero, one, and two. And the three is excluded. And so now we can do the printed end here, and then we're going to do the array, and then the number here, which is from zero to two. And now we have seen that the type here, which is inferred by Rust and displayed by Rust Analyzer, go from an I32, which was a default, to a U size. And the reason is, is because Rust knows that now number is used as an index to an array, and the index of the array, which is not the element, which is the index of the array, is always of type U size. Now we press save, and then everything gets printed. And that's it. That will conclude the last section of this chapter.